Hey guys, this is Tanner Sparks. This is the 175th episode of the ETX Rock Show featuring Amy Holden. This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise d here. Script. Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And not me doing all the ETX Rock. Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. The ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket check. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. But as long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! This is Aubrey Lynn, you're listening to the ETX Rock Show. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with a brand new episode of the ETX Rock Show. This is episode number 175. Just take that in for a minute, that is unbelievable. Uh, 175 episodes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys out there for following along and watching tuning in, listening, wherever you're listening at or watching on YouTube. Definitely want to thank you guys. Uh, and guys, we have a treat for y'all this week. Uh, from uh, She's been to Nashville. She's been to LA. She's back in Texas. She's an East Texas girl. Uh, we want to introduce you guys to Amy Holden. Amy, first time on the ETX Rock Show. Yes. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here, Bob. So how you doing? Good. Doing well, well, Amy's got her guitar. And um, just had an album release in March, mm -hmm. first album, debut first album. album. So you got to kind of have those goosebumps of, man, I've got music out there. Yeah, it's right? amazing. It's a really good feeling to be able to have somewhere, to have something for people to listen to right. like, in their car and be like, I wrote that. And yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I can't imagine. You know, I'm not an artist. A lot of folks out there know that. But, um, you know, I just, I can't, I can't even think about what it would be like to see my name on a CD mm -hmm. or to be going down the road and listening to it on the radio just randomly uh, and just to hear different artists kind of try to describe that feeling is mm -hmm. really cool. Uh, so I understand you're going to play something from the first record. Yeah, it's um, actually the title track of my first album called Where I Begin. Cool. And, and what's the story behind the song? Um, well, it's a breakup song um, about, you know, a man who breaks up with, a, with his girlfriend. And it's not a personal story, but it's a, about a family member and she went okay. through a really, really hard breakup. And um, her story just inspired me to, to write this song to help her and other um, women move on from relationships that failed and right. know that there's, you know, that there's still hope for them and that um, they'll find love again. Very so. cool. So y'all check this out. It's where I begin completely unplugged by the one and only Amy Holden. <clears throat> Did I not kiss you enough? Did I not tell you I loved you so much? Whatever I know I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me I wasn't pretty enough. After all these years, I didn't deserve your love. But one thing I'm sure of is where we end, that's where I begin. And in my career, bad for a little while, but I'll pretend that I don't feel nothing now. Where we end, that's not the end. You know I have no plan to turn it back and no
what a great song, y'all. That was Where I Begin by Amy Holden. And we will be right back after these messages from our friends over at Mobile Audio and Video Productions. This is important, so grab a pin. We are Mobile Audio and Video Productions, serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For $496, with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. How y'all doing? This is Doug Supernon. Thank you for tuning in to ETX Rocks. All right, and we are back with more uh, with Amy Holden. Uh, guys, make sure you check it out on our sponsor over at Mobile Audio and Video Production. Those guys are amazing. They, they mix and master and film everything that you see on the show, most of our episodes anyway. So make sure you're checking them out. They do a phenomenal work. I got that word right. <laughs> and we are back again with uh, Amy Holden. And Amy, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we try to do on the show. Um, on the ETX Rock Show, we try to tell the stories behind the music. Mm -hmm. We wanna learn more about you. We love the music. We're huge music lovers, just like most of our listeners out there. Yeah. But we'd like to tell your fans not only more about you, but also try to help you create new fans, uh, maybe through the show and through some of the other folks that we've had on the ETX Rock Show. So that's kind of where we try to, try to build an audience for you as well as for us and try to learn more about you. Yeah, everything else. So um, I guess the first question I'm going to ask you is at the um, expense of my health, because you're not supposed to ask a female this, but how old are you? <laughs> you know you're not supposed to ask a girl her age? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm in my 20s right now. Okay. And That was the vague answer. I'm in my 20s. That means I'm not telling you about I'm going to be in my 20s forever, so. Yeah, I'm still in my 20s. Yeah. You look, right. you look very young. Thank you. I'm like 29 that. plus 11. <laughs> Minus seven. That's that's going to be my go-to answer too. It's yeah, it's twenty a, plus. Who was know. it that did that for like eighty years on twenty? Was it Mickey Rourke or something like that? That was like twenty-nine forever. Jack Benny was thirty-nine. Well, oh yeah, that's who I'm thinking of. Jack Benny, thirty-nine years old. I'm not showing my age at all. Dude, that sound you hear is people out there googling Jack Benny. <laughs> So you know, and I, I understand you got you're, you're from the Wood County area of East Texas as mm -hmm. well kind of out near Mineola. Yeah, it's in and, the middle of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've had a few folks on the show here lately from the Wood County area. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much talent in that part of Texas that is kind of, I think, it's untapped. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, you know, we've had on the show that are from Wood County, and we'll get comments and messages from people like, where did you find this person? Yeah. Wood County. There's a lot of talent it's out in there. in the water. I don't know. Right. I can tell you. So, I mean, you, you, you're... Growing up in Wood County and still there, but you've gone out to Nashville, you've you've done the LA thing mm -hmm. and kind of maybe that didn't work out so well for you. So I guess I, the real first question is, what kind of motivated you as a young artist to just pack up and go to, go to Nashville? Because I don't even think you knew how to play guitar yet then, did you? I didn't, no. I didn't know how to play guitar. I wasn't a songwriter the, the first time that I moved to Nashville. Right. Um, I. You know, you, that's just kind of what you do as an artist. You you see where other people are coming from, and you know, Nashville was where all the country artists were coming from. And right. so I just packed up all my stuff and moved out there with my mom. And um, we, we lived out there in a studio apartment. And, and I mean, did you find that, you know, maybe people that you were influenced by or you looked up to kind of took that path? So that maybe that's why you were trying to do it that way as well? Yeah. Pretty much, you know, every artist that I listen to on country radio, they were all, you know, living in Nashville. And so I just, I thought, I'll, I'll go out there and I'll see what it's all about. Right. And um, I knew that I, you know, I would learn a lot as I, as I moved out there. And I'm, I'm actually from New Mexico. Okay. And then I moved here to Texas. And in New Mexico, there's not really, there's not really much opportunity for music out there. Right. Yeah. You get that right. And so I had to leave New Mexico in order to have more opportunities. And that right. just seemed like the most logical place to be in. So, I mean, even as a youngster out in New Mexico, you already had this kind of game plan in mind where 
you already knew that, you know, this is probably not going to happen for me in New Mexico, so I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Yeah. So what was the, why was Texas that decision um, ultimately? Well, um, I was, I was having a lot of fun out in Nashville and learning a lot, working with a lot of really talented people. Mm -hmm. um, and then my family moved to Texas and kind of just, I think it was divine intervention. Everyone, right. all of my family moved here to Texas, my siblings and my parents. And I didn't really want to be away from them. I wanted right. to be, be close to them. And then it just happened to be a great place for music. And so I kind of just hit the jackpot and right. a good place to live for music. And it's, it's how long have you been in Texas? I've lived, been here for about five years now. Because okay. I, I know you haven't really played a whole lot in Texas. I, I've seen a couple of shows here and there. And um, I'll be honest, you know, I didn't really, uh, I, you haven't been on my radar very much. And then the ETX Music Awards voting started. Mm -hmm. And I started seeing your name nominated a lot. Oh, you know, cool. we, you were on our top 10 list everywhere. It didn't make oh. top five. But yeah, I mean, several categories, you were top 10. So I was like, Okay, Amy Holman, I'm gonna have to check this out. Mm -hmm. And then I went to your website, and your website is so beautifully done, by the way. It's Thank you. completely professional. Um, you got great tracks on there, great information. And then going back and forth between that and your social media, I'm like, this girl is in Wood County. <laughs> and I don't know. Why don't I know about this girl in Wood County? And that's when I reached out to you, and I was like, mm -hmm. man, we, we've got to do something together. Yeah, that was exciting. Um, yeah, we had that songwriter thing come up, which we're doing Thursday, and which you're a part of, and thank you for that again, by the way. And I was like, we have to have her. We have to, because, I mean, I don't like when there's music right under my nose that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, I take that really personally. Um, I want to know people. I want to mm -hmm. do the research. I want to be able to bring that to other people, because it's important, I think. Um, so I, I guess the question in here is, what do you have to do to kind of get your, your music out more locally here in a, within your geographic region mm -hmm. and getting more gigs at venues? Because I know you, you've played at Big Sandy and, and mm -hmm. some other places, yeah. and I'm sure you want to gig more, right? Yeah, I love performing live. Um, I've been spending a lot of time in Nashville doing my second album, and so right. that's taken up quite a bit of time, and I spend a lot of time writing for that one as well. Mm -hmm. And when you're writing new songs, it's... Um, like your old songs kind of get pushed to the background a little bit and so, yeah. but I've still done shows I've right. done live shows I've done um, a few up in like Winsboro and just like little little towns right. um, it's tough so, yeah, I, I try to keep, a lot of yeah. <laughs> I try to keep up um, try to do at least one show a month right. but with the traveling back and forth to Nashville that's kind of hindered it a little that's bit that's great that makes sense because it sounds to me like you know if you're focused on writing you want to focus on writing mm -hmm. if you're focused on production and you want to focus on that. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like the music ends up better that way? I guess the other side of the coin would be, I'm going to do all of this stuff at once. I'm going to mm -hmm. do all the writing. I'm going to produce it. I'm going to record, and I'm going to do all these shows. Mm -hmm. And do you think maybe the, the music would suffer if you did it that way instead? I think in my case it would. I just, I've, I've tried it that way where mm -hmm. I've just, you know, my to-do list has been a mile long and it just gets really overwhelming. Right. And I feel like my creativity just goes downhill whenever that happens and so when I when I'm songwriting I just want to be songwriting and when I'm performing I just want to be performing right. and when I'm in that the studio I just want to be in the studio like not thinking about all the different things that I I need to do as an artist or like you know social media there's just so many different levels yeah. to, you know that you have to focus on and from my mind you know I just need to stay in and one one thing and um, so almost like that one track mind yeah, yeah. definitely and that, that's that's my case you know there's yeah. a lot of people out there who can multitask Oh, there are. Everything. I don't know how they could do that. Yeah. You know? I mean, I multitask a lot too, but I don't have the creative side mm -hmm. um, that a songwriter has, for example, which is why I have so much respect for songwriters, why I'm looking forward to Thursday. Well, yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun out there. Um, you mentioned earlier the first song you played for us, Where I Begin, uh, was something that you kind of took from someone else's experience and wrote it down and made a great song about it. Uh, do you feel like you have more success writing songs that other people experience? Or can you also kind of reach within your own within your own experiences as well? I think it's both, yeah. um, and definitely as I've song as I've been a songwriter for many years, it's changed over time. Like it was easier for me to write about other people's experiences right. when I first started, just because songwriting is so personal. You know, it's like opening up your journal to people. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten more comfortable with sh like sharing my own personal stories through my songs. Um, and so I think it just depends. You know, like that story. Um, she, sh my this relative, she just laid, laid it all out. You know, this whole thing, she was going through a really bad divorce and it was, 
she was just having a really hard time. And a lot of the lines that are in that song, she she said basically, you know, like he right. said I wasn't pretty enough. He said I wasn't good enough. Right. And like that that really hit me hard. And I wow. thought, man, she needs to know that she's she has worth and that right. you know this song hopefully like i could write a song for her that she can play in the car when she's feeling bad so and, almost and like a through. tribute to yeah it. that's awesome mm -hmm. and I, you know we've talked to a lot of songwriters over the last year of the show and they all have you know different ways of creating and it's just incredible you know it's like being able to take someone else's experience and putting that much emotion into it even though it didn't happen to you mm -hmm. uh, i think that would be really hard i don't know how I would be able to do it. And that's why a lot of songwriters out there are really good at kind of, you know, capturing their own feelings, but maybe fall short when someone else is experiencing what they're writing about. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool that a, a good song came out of that. Yeah, I think so too. It's and, like and, silver lining. Right. And the first album, um, which is called Where I Begin, just came out March 31st. We'll talk about where y'all can get that later. Um, this was actually produced by a Grammy Award winner. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, James Waddell. Yeah. In Nashville. How? <laughs> Debut album, how? I know, again, I just hit the jackpot there. Um, so when I first moved to Nashville, I lived in a, an apartment, and it was in South Nashville. And he lived right down the road. Wow. Yeah, and it, we just found him randomly and it just worked out perfectly that was probably, that was when i first moved to nashville so there was quite a few years right. between the time that i first moved there when i wasn't a songwriter you know and um then i wrote all these songs and i i played them for him and he and i picked the ones that we thought should be the first songs for people to hear that awesome. i've written and it was a great experience working with james he's so talented and he he's great just a great producer right. you know has a lot of amazing ideas and, and the second album lucky. Is Baird Music Crew. Mm -hmm. What the heck? Yeah. Th those are, they're great. <laughs> That's like if you were to open up like the phone book in Nashville and it, and, and you looked under best production crews, mm -hmm. we're talking like two of the cream of the crop for a young independent, independent artist. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, talk about hitting the jackpot. So yeah. um, now you're working with Baird Music Group. And if you guys don't know who Baird Music Group is and mm -hmm. Um, you're a country music fan. You probably should be Googling that right now and yeah. just be prepared. They've worked with everybody that's <laughs> somebody. Yeah. Um, I mean, Larry Baird and his crew over there are just unbelievable um, creative minds. So for a young independent artist, it sounds to me like when you were out in Nashville, you were kind of beating the bushes, mm -hmm. kind of just trying to get your name out there. Now, you know, the, the information you sent us was that you failed in Nashville and you failed in LA and you know, I don't look at it that way so much because you got a Grammy award winning producer. Now you're working with Baird. This mm -hmm. kind of stuff had to be cultivated while you were failing in Nashville, right? Yeah, well definitely like I, those experiences that I had in Nashville and LA, I was doing, you know, just, I was just trying to find out who I was as an artist. Right, right. And that, you know, that just comes with time. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't get started, um, I didn't move out to Nashville till I was 20, you know? And right. so, I, and I, I didn't really even get my toes in the water with music until then. And so I just had to take some time and figure out who I was, like what I wanted to be as an artist, who I wanted, what I wanted to say to people and how I wanted to convey myself. And I think that just came through, you know, meeting people and, and hearing other artists and just experiencing it for myself. And, you know, yeah. having my own little personal fa like failures and then also my, my personal successes and then just making it be the person who I am. You always know? keeping so, forward. Yeah, I always, right. and I, I always had that outlook of, you know, maybe this this isn't exactly my time right now, you right. know, but there will be a time. And exactly. I'll, you know, I'll work until I get to that point and nothing is gonna stop me until I get to that point, so. So I know you're a country music artist and this mm -hmm. is a question I like to ask pretty much everybody on the show. I'm sorry if you're bored about it, but <laughs> um, I'd love to hear an artist try to describe how they think they fit. What are, what, how do you describe your own musical style? My own musical style? I describe it as me, you know, it's very yeah. me. I, it's, it's a mix between country and country pop and country rock, right. depending on the day, depending on the song that I've written. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I try not to put myself in any kind of box because as a songwriter, it's, it's nice just to have your mind open and you know, whatever song comes to you, it's just the song that you've right. written and it can be whatever it needs to be. And, 
So you just mentioned basically three genres, and the one that I had in my mind wouldn't even mention. Really? Americana. Americana. I, I definitely get that vibe from you sometimes when you get, uh, I think with your personality, and again, I just met her today, <laughs> um, but reading about you and seeing videos of you on YouTube and other places on your social media, mm -hmm. you have this really quirky personality. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can feel that coming out in your songwriting. Mm -hmm. Like she's got a song called County Jail, y'all. It's <laughs> on YouTube. Go check it out. This is one of the most witty songwriting lyrics that you'll ever hear. And it's very quirky. Yeah. You know, and it's like you're trying to be funny, but at the same time, you want people to know that you're being relevant with your lyrics, mm -hmm. too. Um, so, man, th th that takes a lot of bravery, a lot of courage to, to let your personality quirks like bleed into your lyrics definitely it does. so does yeah. that come naturally or are you just i mean i don't want to say are you forcing it because obviously you're not but, mm -hmm. you know a lot of people will shy away from certain aspects of their personality mm -hmm. when they're writing it down so is that something you're thinking about when you're writing actually that song was i wrote it kind of as a joke really because like that is really my personality and i um, I didn't think that I would ever play it for anybody. And then I played it for my family and they were laughing hysterically. Yeah, and I was like, more of that. I, well, I know, and I, the thing is like, I'm not the person in the room who's making everybody laugh. Like <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the shy, like introverted, the one at the party who's like, okay, can we leave now? Yeah. You know? And but, so the thing is like songwriting has given me this outlet to be able to like share that part of my personality that maybe wouldn't shine through. Right. Um, but yeah, I love singing that song because it makes people laugh and yeah. that doesn't, you know, I'm not the one who's. It's, it's not what people would term as like typical Amy Holden. Yeah, right? yeah. So it kind of throws them for a loop, mm -hmm. especially if you if you go to see Amy at a show or something, and you you know two hours of country and rock and pop and all this, and then you hit them with that county jail. <laughs> I bet you the tip jar gets filled pretty quick at that point if you time it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So one other name that has come up in uh, my research of Amy Holden. Um, somebody who I'm a huge fan of and also a friend of is John DeFore. Yeah. And um, we've had a lot of John DeFore artists on this show. And John is just, uh, in my opinion, one of those unsung legends within East Texas um, that people need to know more of. And hopefully, um, maybe in season three, we can get John out here to be on the show because this man is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to, to music. So what I would love to hear, because I know, you know, John has cultivated a lot of careers, especially in the Wood County area. Mm -hmm. He's worked with, I believe, Miranda Lambert. I know he's worked with um, Katie Lynn, who's been on the show, and, and many, many others. Mm -hmm. Casey Musgraves. Right. Um, so I, I need to know how, first of all, how did you meet John? And um, what has he done for you as far as, you know, getting you from one level to another? Because I know John is phenomenal kind of pulling people up to a level they couldn't get to by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear you talk about John a little bit. Great, I would love to too, I love John. Uh, I I didn't actually, I had no idea who John was. Right. My mom, she was reading the paper and she read something about John and she said, hey, you need to go and meet him mm -hmm. and start you know, taking lessons from him. And I'm, I'm a big believer in like God directing your path and so I think that that was really God, like right. giving giving me a lead of where I needed God's to be. Yeah. yeah. And so I went and I met John and I played him a couple of my songs that I had written already. And had, I don't know, probably 30 songs that I had written. And he said, great, okay, now start writing more. And then once I started writing more, it was like he, he gave me a, a, like a limit to how many songs he wanted me to write each right. week. And he has just, he's been a really great motivator for me because he's, he's, he's believed in me from the start and he knew and he could see something in me and like kind of like, just, you know, polishing the diamond. And right. I, I feel like I want to be the songwriter I am today without him and his, his coaching. Right. And the great thing about John is, is he, when it comes to being a, a songwriting coach, I mean, he's so much more than that, but, um, he, he never ever lets his own um, personality kind of bleed into another artist's songwriting, even though mm -hmm. he's coaching you. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he does so well is he's coaching up your abilities. Yeah. Not teaching you his experiences, but just kind of coaching you in, in taking your talent and whatever it may be. He's great at just seeing what other people don't see. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's why I love John before. I try to mention his name as much as I can on the show because He's an untapped source of 
everything for music here in East Texas. Mm -hmm. And finally, this year he's been nominated for the Lifetime Achievement Award at yeah. the ETS Music Awards. And was there a lot of people who did that? Because I was one of them who did that. That you nominated yeah, him for? Yeah, I did. I, was, uh, I can't, I can't say it. how many, but it was, <laughs> there was enough for top five. Yeah, I'll just awesome. say that. He deserves it. Yeah, sure. absolutely. And yeah. That, you know, all five names on that list are just, as far as, I mean, East Texas icons, really. It's going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. Are you going to the awards? What day is it? September 8th. September 8th. I will definitely try to do you that. You should try. Yeah, no, it's it's always a good show. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I saw that you were mentored by John, and I was like, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know he he loves to, and uh, I mean, it's, it's, he's always available for you too. You know, if you have a question, yeah, it could be the middle of the night, and you just, hey, John, man, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> da, 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 da. sorry, I, you know, message you at four thirty. <laughs> he's, not that, he's not that that early anyways so yeah. or that late i guess <laughs> yeah yeah it depends on your perspective yeah. all right so if you're following along with the etx rock show we we want to thank you uh for watching again with amy holden and uh if you watch more than one episode you probably know that we play games on this show all the time and um, i've been sitting here trying to decide which game to play with amy holden and uh, let me tell you guys a little bit about the process to get on the show we always tell our guests or per prospective guests watch an episode or two of the show so we do warn them we tell them watch an episode didn't i tell you to watch an episode i think you did all right yes. so they should not be surprised when i hit them with the we're playing a game but they're always surprised all right so let me try to explain to you amy what what the heck is i don't know if you've watched another episode with this game in it but what the heck is basically 10 questions um that are just designed to try to get an, uh, basically a rise out of you okay we want the very first thing that pops into your brain. Mm -hmm. So don't like think about it. Mm -hmm. I ask the question, if something pops in, just tell me what it oh, is. No, this, might be, this could be bad. That's all right. <laughs> so this is What the Heck with Amy Holden. All right. Ah. First question, what the cat scream about? Snakes. <laughs> just never know. <laughs> it could be true. All right, so number two, how annoying do you find baby pictures on social media? Zero. You don't find them annoying at all? Maybe one. Maybe. If it's like over and over and over again. But I like babies. I think they're adorable. So. Okay. So like a zero to a one. So like a point five. Maybe. Like okay. point four seven. All right. Now, on, number three. On average, how many times a week do you hurt yourself attempting to dance in the shower? <laughs> zero. <laughs> that was a lie. Did you see that, y'all? That was. What is it up and to the right that's a lie? Because if it's up to the, into the right, she just lied. I think it's up and to the left for a lie. <laughs> that was a lie, too. <laughs> All right. Number four. If you fail to pay your exorcist, do you get repossessed? No. I, that's really hard. No. Are you sure? If you fail Because if an exorcist comes to get the demon out of you. Yes. So if they come and they get the demon out of you, and then you don't pay the exorcist. Uh-huh. That demon could repossess you. Yes. That's a really hard one. You went one. from no to yes there. That's that's a trick question. I feel like you, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so that was number four. <laughs> number five. If you if a person weighs 198 pounds, and this is simple math now. Okay. If a person weighs 198 pounds and they eat two pounds of crawfish. Yes. Does that mean the person is now 1% crawfish? What? Is this the ACT test? Like, what is it? Just, <laughs> is he now 1%? 198 crawfish? pounds, he ate two pounds of crawfish. So, is he 1% crawfish? I should be asking now? my boyfriend this because he's like in finance. I don't know. <laughs> what does this get to do with finance? <laughs> it's simple math. He's clearly 1% crawfish. Okay. At I least guess. until, you know, digestion is complete. Okay, he's 1% crawfish. Okay, 1%. Thank you for giving me the answer. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Which one? Should, all right, number six. All right, so Donald Duck never wears pants, right? Are you familiar with Donald I, yes, Duck? Yes, of course. Have you ever seen him wearing pants? No. Okay, no. so why does he wear a towel when he gets out of the shower? You'll have to ask the animators. I, he, he, his feathers are his pants. I don't <laughs> his feathers are his pants. <laughs> and he's, they're wet, so he wants to dry them. 
Okay. I feel like that's a pretty good answer. That is, that's not bad. Yeah. That's a, like a family feud answer. His feathers are wet, answer. and he, was okay. one, he wants to dry them off. All right. All right, so number seven. If someone someone gives you an elephant, mm -hmm. now you can't sell it, you can't give it away. So what do you do with this elephant? I raise it as my child, and we, and we adventure around the world together. They adventure around the world yes. together. I plan on having seeking out elephant. people that are one percent crawfish. <laughs> you should ask my dad because I said that I want I've, I've wanted an elephant for years. Really, I literally have. Yes. And this this was your opportunity for someone to give you one. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to sell it and give no. it away anyway. You would no, just go would, adventuring be, with it. We would be best friends. Okay, what would you name it? Probably, probably a member from the Friends cast. So like Rachel, Phoebe. Yeah, Rachel or Phoebe. Probably Phoebe. Yeah, I'll do Phoebe. <laughs> We'll, sing, we'll play songs together. We'll, I, I will teach it to play. Smelly cat. <laughs> Phoebe the elephant, baby Holden, smelly cat duet coming up at the yes. end of the show, y'all. <laughs> we'll talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> wow. This is awesome. All right, number seven. How violently do you have to fight the urge to scream when you hear an ice cream truck coming? I don't like ice cream, so. This elephant wants nothing to do with Amy no. Holden at this point. <laughs> you don't like ice cream? I don't like ice cream. I know it makes me weird. I think it's because I'm a singer and you're not supposed to eat, like, you're not supposed to have like milk dairy. or anything. Yeah. And so I've just trained my body to like not want it. And so now I just don't wow. like ice cream. That's and weird. you never know when you're going to be asked to sing. Like I could be asked to sing at midnight from some random stranger. And if I've eaten ice cream, you have to be I, ready. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't sing after. So you're, you're just being vigilant. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm not it could be midnight. I'm, I'm not dedicated to my job. So yeah. like if somebody just like randomly tweeted you at like 1207 and said, you need to go Facebook live. Mm -hmm. I need to hear County Jail. Yeah. You're ready. Yeah, because I had no ice cream. Artists out there, take yeah. note. All right, number <laughs> I've, I've, I've raised a little. eight. <laughs> number eight. Um, let's see, number eight. A penguin walks through that door mm -hmm. right now, wearing a sombrero. Okay. Why is he here, and what does he say? He wants some street tacos, and he wants to know where to get them in Nashville, and I will take him. So he's going to come to a house in East Texas <laughs> to find out where street tacos are in Nashville. Yeah. That's probably why he's a penguin. <laughs> probably. All right, number nine. <laughs> okay, if evolution is true, then how in the world did sloths make the cut? Because <laughs> they're they are so sweet. How could we not have sloths here? How do you know they're sweet? Because if anything moves that slowly, they look kind of douchey just so to me, peaceful. Amy. You know, they're just sweet. They're peaceful. You can just feel it. I can sense it. Have you ever met a sloth? No. So how do you know they're sweet or peaceful? I feel like we would, I don't know, but I feel like we would be good friends if we would just nap together. And So she's going adventuring with the elephant and napping with the sloth. I have a zoo around. You just have like animal plans for every member of the animal kingdom. Pretty much. That's what I do in my spare time. Parrots. What would you do with a parrot? A parrot? Yeah. We would, we would become pirates. And we would sail. <laughs> All right, last one. Number 10. If Amy Holden was a cannibal, Okay. Would clowns taste funny? They would probably just taste disgusting. I, we, I look. I've talked about this with other people. You're a cannibal. Okay, so I want to eat them. So the clown, yeah, nobody is disgusting uh -huh. because you love, love people. Them. But they taste funny. Probably yes, they would taste funny. To okay, because yeah. everybody's like, oh, that's gross. They would taste <laughs> awful. No, you're a cannibal. No ketchup uh -huh. and salt. You're good. Yeah, so who knows? They probably taste funny. Though. Yeah, I think so, I too. Assuming. I think it would probably depend on the clown, though. Well, yeah. Yeah. We'll All right, so that was what the heck with Amy Holden. She did not ever say what the heck through the whole 10 questions. She did say what? <laughs> well, so it was close. We got a what, but not the heck. So awesome. Thank you for being a good sport. <laughs> it was fun. Right. Hey, y'all, this is Bree Bagwell. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. We are back with Amy Holden again. One of one of my funnest what the hecks ever. Um, that was amazing. Finally, we had somebody actually say what they were thinking when <laughs> when the question came out. Snakes is what cats think about. Remember that. Ask them. And tell unless you. you're Garfield, then it's lasagna every <laughs> single time. Snake lasagna. Snake lasagna. Maybe. All right. So uh, she's got her guitar again. She's going to do another song for us. And I understand that this one is off of the new record that you're working on with yeah. Baird Music Group. Check them out. 
Um, what's the name of the song? Tell us the story behind it. This one is called Gravel Road, and it's a song that I wrote about the house that I grew up in. Right. Cool. And the, and more, more specifically, the road that I grew up on. It was out in the country in New Mexico, and again, in the middle of nowhere. That's so this is a work, personal so. experience. It is, yeah, it's oh, very awesome. personal. So it's, I wrote it after we, we moved from there, and we sold our house that I had lived in for 20 years. And, so this is Gravel Road by Amy Holden. Not very long ago, I was riding my bike down a dusty road. My favorite dog by my side She'd watch for snakes, I'd chase butterflies And after turning every stone The setting sun would call me home I had it all right there can still taste the dirt in the air as I strum the line of an old wire fence and I play to the melody of a mountain wind dancing through my childhood song sweet memories down a gravel road Three dormer windows showed our life inside The house my dad built with my mom by his side With tiny footprints and a concrete slab Between the swing set and the cream grass I had 20 birthdays there when the sign went up and the rooms went there And as I turned the key in silence I could almost hear those old walls crying As I strummed the line of an old wire fence As it played to the melody of a mountain wind Dancing through my childhood song Sweet memories down a gravel road Birthdays turn to wedding days Best friends soon moved away And never was quite the same but those memories stay back down the gravel road. And I strum the line of an old wire fence as it plays to the melody of the mountain wind, dancing through my childhood song. Thanks for the memories, Gravel Road. Wow, so that's Gravel Road by Amy Holden. Um, again, uh, very Americana, very folksy. Mm -hmm. um, is the end production going to kind of keep that vibe as well? Kind of. It's, it has a more of a bluegrass. Kind of yeah. Right yeah, yeah, kind of Alice in Krausey. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I was listening to it. It's kind of that storytelling song that she kind of made famous mm -hmm. um, back in the '90s. And then you know, you you remind me a lot about '90s country. Thank you. Um, I love '90s country. You know, people like Mindy McCready and uh, Cherie Austin, people like that. I don't know if you've heard of those uh, those, those people, but I love the vibe that you're 
given off with your writing and um, not kind of keeping it within one genre all the time. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, I'd love to know who your influences were uh, musically and non-musically growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, 90s country, you know, that's what I grew up listening to. So pretty much anything that was on the radio at that point, you right. know, and I um, loved, you know, Shania Twain. I loved Faith Hill. I loved Martin Luther's Bride mm -hmm. and Allison Krauss. Allison Krauss was the first um, artist song that I ever covered. Um, I was in fourth grade and that was my first talent show that I did. Nice. It was an Allison Krauss when you say nothing at all. Yeah. And it's kind of where it all started from. Right. And um, so definitely them and when I look back, I think Phil Vassar, wow. you know, was a really big influence on me because Very when cool. in the nineties he wrote a lot of a lot absolutely of a lot of stuff that he didn't actually put out himself, yeah. uh, songs for other people. Yeah, and that yeah. And like pretty much all the songs that I love from the nineties he wrote. Yeah. So yeah. he became a really big inspiration for me once I figured out that he was the songwriters behind. Um, so he was kind of like a songwriting and, influence. For yeah, him. definitely. And I got to see him in Nashville. He was probably the first songwriter that I got to see in awesome. Nashville. And he played a really small venue in Franklin, Tennessee, which is south of Nashville. Mm -hmm. And me and my mom went and saw him. And he was like, he just had this this wonderful personality. And like, you, you just felt like you could approach him and mm -hmm. ask him anything about his songs. And he was, you know, amazing at what he does. And I felt like he was just a really big inspiration to me at that start when I began songwriting. Right. And so yeah, I definitely look up to him. And there's a lot of other. Have you ever heard a there. song called uh, Jacob's Dream by Alison yeah, Krauss? Yeah, I love that song. Amazing. Yes, finally. Yes. That is the saddest song ever written. It is. It's Far so none the saddest. You guys out there might say it's He Stopped Loving Her Today. Mm -hmm. You haven't listened to Jacob's Dream. Mm -hmm. I promise you. You cannot make it through that song for the first time without shedding a tear. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those songs that grabs you. It's haunting. It's just, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's mm -hmm. like bluegrass, sure, but Bluegrass is usually chippy and happy and all this, and then Allison hits you with that story. Yeah. So it's awesome. I finally know somebody <laughs> who knows that song. It's like third or fourth time I've mentioned that really? song on the, on the air. Yeah, Amazing song. I'm, I won't give it away. Y'all go listen to it after the show. So um, again, this is the record. It's called Where I Begin. This came out March 31st. It's Amy Holden. Um, make sure you're getting a copy of this. So tell folks where they can get the record. The record is available on my website if you would like to purchase a physical co copy and you can't come to one of my shows, it's on there and I'll send you one. And um, if you request it, I'll even autograph it for you, whatever you want. Nice. And um, it's also available on iTunes and um, Amazon. And you can listen to it on Spotify. And I think it's got like six songs on it. It does, it has six songs, all originals. And, and watching you grow the last track on this on this album is probably, I think it's your best work on there. Thank you. I really love that I song. appreciate that. Yeah, it's a really good one. It's kind of like a, it's about a, like your daughter or something, right? It's about actually I don't have any children right now, so I was. But that's that's, so that's how I. Yeah, that's what you think. It's um about my nieces and nephews. Okay. I'm really close with all of them. There's twelve of them, and they they they've been a really big part of my life. See, when years, I when I listen so. to that, I'm a dad of four, or six, or some. I don't know how many kids I have, but um, <laughs> I'm like, and I know how many. <laughs> I have four, and then my girlfriend has three, and then no more. <laughs> but it's, it definitely gives that vibe of that song, you know, like kind of not taking for granted the little things mm -hmm. and what, what's uh, what's part of growing up. Yeah. Um, and you capture that in that song. I really enjoyed that. Um, so this is the, the debut record, came out March 31st, and I know you're working on the second record now. So you're not taking any breaks. No. You're just full steam, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Because this is really a six song album. It's really an EP. So does mm -hmm. that mean the next one's going to be a full album? Um, it's the next one is planned to be an EP as well, but there might be some bonus tracks on it. Okay. We'll see how. how that and what's the time frame? When can we look at getting that? Um, we're gonna we're hoping this fall. Okay. Fingers crossed. Two in the same year. Yes. No, you no, are no. crazy. <laughs> Absolutely it's nuts. It's a lot of work. A lot of songwriting went into it. A lot of work has gone into the production. Just again, doing so. vocal tracks in the in the in the studio, mm -hmm. doing that twice a year, yeah. can just drive you nuts. Yeah. It would me. Because, I mean, I'm sure you probably do some of your own harmony, too, right? I did, yeah. I did a lot, um, all the harmony that's on, right. on that show. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's why people wait like a year and a half to do another album. <laughs> so what's the strategy behind that? Just kind of getting another one out? Well, the, the thing is, a lot of the songs that I've 
um, I've written since that album came out. People are requesting for them yeah. to be to, to, to so buy it's them. So the fans. It's the fans, and yeah. so I'm trying to get them done as fast as I can for people to be able to listen to them right. and not be disappointed. County jail gonna be on it. County jail's gonna be on it. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Wait till you hear this song. It's gonna be cool. All right, so social media-wise, I know you have a website and all that stuff. Let folks out there know where they can find Amy Holden. Um, you can find me again on my website, um, amyholden.com. Um, send me a little email or anything on there. I love responding back to anyone who reaches out to me. And it's facebook.com slash amyholdenmusic. I'm on there quite a bit. And, and it's spelled A-M-Y-H-O-L-D-E-N. Amy Holden Music. And it's amyholdenmusic.com, right? No, just Amy Holden. That's what I thought. Just Amy, Amy Holden. Holden. Dot com, but Facebook is Amy Holden Music. Mm -hmm. You have a Twitter and an Instagram? I do, but you, th there's a lot of cobwebs on it right now. So right. I'm, yeah. I'm a pretty introverted person, and so just doing Facebook right now is... Yeah. Is... So follow her there, too. Let's get the cobwebs off of those social medias <laughs> for her. Let's show Amy how important those social medias are, because they really are. They definitely they, are. They, show a de uh, they reach a different demographic. Facebook is more of a middle age kind of demographic, people my age, 35, 40, 45. Instagram is more like, you know, yeah. the kids Little and ones. stuff like that. And Twitter is kind of a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. But a lot of industry folks use Twitter rather than Facebook. Facebook yeah. So that's why Twitter is so important. You'd be surprised. Those cobwebs are coming off of it. Tonight, yeah, so. for sure. Um, Instagram, I'd say, is the least important unless you're just trying to find people, you know, the younger crowd that's going to buy your stuff digitally mm -hmm. um, that's a good way to reach that crowd um, but if you want to broaden your demographic that's how you do it there's a reason why there's three different ones and they do different things for different folks mm -hmm. um, so and I feel you believe me my Twitter has cobwebs on it too <laughs> it's hard it's hard it is yeah I mean social media can become a full-time job mm -hmm. you know um, so if people want to book Amy Holden I'm assuming you would send them to your webpage Right. Yes. Um, if you want to book me, just there's a scroll down to the bottom and there's a little email thing and it goes directly to me and we talk about it. So that's again, amyholden.com. If you're a venue out there and you want to book Amy Holden, that's how you do it. Is there any place you won't play geographically? Um, I so if I'm a venue in New Hampshire and I call you tomorrow. Uh -huh. if, you know, if they're, you know, if they want to provide me a place to stay on their couch, then sure. <laughs> So as long as nice you have meal. a couch up there in New Hampshire. <laughs> and a nice meal, you know, maybe. Yeah. So Chick -fil -A, clam chowder. Chick-fil-A. Chowder, not chowder. Chowder. <laughs> Speaking of booking shows, I understand you have some really big gigs coming up at the State Fair. I Tell do. us about those. Yeah, I've been invited to play back at the State Fair this year. And they're going to be the last Saturday of September and then the three... No, I'm sorry. The last Friday of, of September and then the three Fridays of October. The first wow. Three Fridays of October. No, so you're going to be there four times mm -hmm. there. And you've done this before? I did. I did it last year when they invited me to come back. Very cool. This year. And um, is this, uh, I, remind me, which, which town or city is the State Fair located? That's going to be in Dallas. That's what I thought. Yeah. It's gonna be, and that, the, it'll be right behind the big tech statue. Okay. Big, you know. All right. Very cool. Place. So that's the last Friday in September, first three Fridays in October at the State Fair in Dallas. Yes. From Amy Holden. So that's a perfect opportunity for everybody to come out and see Amy. I'm sure you'd really love to see folks support out there. I love it. <laughs> Amy, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, it's been an honor to have you on the ETX Rock Show, first time ever. Mm -hmm. Wood County represent. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just you're, you're doing great stuff. Um, I'm not a huge fan of pop country, and you reached me. So that's an oh, awesome okay. thing. Awesome. Um, I'm a huge traditionalist. People out there know, and I know a lot of people are probably watching this going, Boston, you're losing it. You have a pop country artist on your show. Well, I'm telling you, Amy is not the prototypical pop artist. Um, her lyrics are relevant. Um, her lyrics will reach you in a way that pop country usually doesn't. Because I'm sure you understand the way bro country is, right? Yeah. You're I, not that not artist. Uh -uh, no, exactly. And that's why she's here, y'all. So make sure you're checking out Amy Holden. I haven't lost my scruples. I still don't like Nashville very much. Nashville, you're starting to wear on me a little bit. You might get through it eventually. Amy's helping you there. <laughs> so keep it up. Barrett Music Group is one of the one of the groups out there that is definitely different than the rest. Um, I think they provide more freedom for an artist than a lot of the labels in, in Nashville do. So it's always great what they're doing. 
All right, guys, we want to thank you guys for watching another great episode of the ETX Rock Show with yours truly, Boston Chris. Um, we just thank you all so much for your support and everything that we do here with the show. Um, Amy, we want to thank you again for taking the time out of your busy schedule on a Sunday in East Texas to come talk with us for a little while today and, and showcase your amazing songs, by the way. Yeah. And also, I, I know I've thanked you twice, but thank you so much for um, coming out to Gladewater with us mm -hmm. um, on August 3rd. We're going to have a great time. Yeah. Um, the Songbird Session, number one. Hopefully, it'll it'll be the first of many, um, which will be four of what I consider the best four um, female singer-songwriters in the East Texas region. We'll all be out there. And uh, the concept is going to be like sitting around a campfire. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll sing a song, everybody will sing a song, and then we'll talk about it. And cool. why did you write it that way? And, and whatever. Mm -hmm. We're trying to reach a different crowd here in East Texas. Because I think songwriters are important, and I think people that are music fans need to see that importance and that value um, in the creativity behind the song. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that we can kind of provide that vehicle. And anyway, I just wanted to thank you again for taking your time and your talent to come out to Gladewater um, this week and, and do that. It should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great show. I, I was surprised you said yes, I'll be honest. Really? Well, you and I hadn't met yet. Do you think I didn't like you or something? Well, you didn't know me from Adam. Yeah. And here I am, some stranger saying, hey, Amy, will you come out and play our, play for free for with us? Mm -hmm. and, and you did. So, you know, you have a lot of my respect. Thank you. Um, and now that we've met, you can, you know, we'll take this further and, and we'll see what we can do with it. Um, and again, I know this will be out after that show, but it's Katie Lynn, Heather Little, Amy Holden, and Meredith Crawford, four of the best um, singer-songwriters in East Texas. It's going to be a phenomenal time. Um, if you're wanting to follow along with the ETX Rock Show, uh, we are located on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Bob Webb's included. You can find us at ETX Rocks on all three of those. Um, we're on the Tuned In app. This is a brand new thing, guys. The Tuned In app has all internet radio stations and the ETX Rock Show has finally been accepted on the Tuned In app. So you can go on there and listen, binge watch, binge listen, all 175 episodes now will all be there completely free. So forget Netflix, y'all. The ETX Rock Show is where it's at. Um, from local artists to national artists, everything in between. Make sure you're checking us out there. If you're listening on iTunes, please throw us a rate and review. That'll definitely help us a lot. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Completely free. That'll help us. Um, as we always say on the show, we want to thank you guys out there for supporting live local music. And don't ever forget. ETX rocks. Sure does. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn. And make sure to tune in to ETX rocks with... Boston Chris. Zaren Watson, ETX Rocks. ETX Rocks, Alan Fox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made in the whole district. Hi, this is Paul Bebo and I'm ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're gonna love it. ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, DP here. ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, we're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey East Texas, Jaden Farnsworth, ETX Rocks. Hey everybody, I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. To the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi East Texas, this is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East Texas, we're Lady Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks. And remember, ETX rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX rocks. Hello. 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 We're one way home. Hey, East Texas, this is Teaser. Please continue to support local music. And always remember, ETX Rocks! Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hi, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and ETX Rocks. Hey, 
this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Tough guy. Ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texarkana down to the coast and Dallas down to Houston and everything in between, we are ETX Rocks! <laughs>